everyone for attending, inshallah. Uh, the class will be starting shortly just after these few announcements. Uh, just the regular housekeeping ones. Um, as the brothers are uh, all aware, uh, for the carpeted area, no fizzy drinks or juice or any kind of flavored water um, or coffee or anything like that. If you want to, you can have that, inshallah, uh, in the lobby area. Same thing for the sisters as well upstairs. Uh, if you want to have your drinks and your juices, please have that outside in the tiled area. Um, the class today would be a detailed tafsir. Uh, it's a series. It's a six-week series. Every Friday, it, it will cover a detailed tafsir of uh, Surah Yusuf and uh, the story of Yusuf alayhi uh, salam. As per the etiquette of attending such class, inshallah, try and make as much notes as you can. And I ask all the brothers and sisters to move forward as much th as they can as well. Inshallah, bi-ithnillah. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Allahumma wafiqna min al-laqwali wa al-a'mali lima tuhibbuhu wa tarda Before we start, inshallah, this is not a lecture So I want everyone to be attentive and try your best to understand and ask questions and be ready to ask questions as well, inshallah Second thing, can everyone get a mushaf? Because I'm not just going to narrate the story. I'm going to specifically narrate from the Quran, insha'Allah ta'ala. Can, can, uh, is the AC on? Can we put it a bit off, half off? Whatever's making the room cold. Just uh, a bit off. Not all of it, just a bit. Sure. Two and a half pages. Last page. Well, I'm a belaga should do. Not too slow, too fast. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين 
قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم لقد كان في يوسف وإخوته آيات للسائلين لقد كان في يوسف وإخوته آيات للسائلين إذ قالوا ليوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا ونحن عصبة إن أبانا لفي ضلال مبين أقتلوا يوسف أو اطرحوه أرضا يخن لكم وجه أبيكم وتكونوا من بعده قوما صالحين قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعد السيارة إن كنتم فاعلين قالوا يا أبانا ما لك لا تأمنا على يوسف وإنا له لناصحون أرسله معنا غدا يرتع ويلعب وإنا له لحافظون قال إني ليحزنني أن تذهبوا به وأخاف أن يأكله الذئب وأنتم عنه غافلون قالوا لئن أكله الذئب ونحن عصبة إنا إذا لخاسرون فلما ذهبوا به وأجمعوا أن يجعلوه في غيابة الجب وأوحينا إليه لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا وهم لا يشعرون وجاءوا أباهم عشاء يبكون قالوا يا أبانا إنا ذهبنا نستبق وتركنا يوسف عند متاعنا فأكله الذئب وما أنت بمؤمن لنا ولو كنا صادقين وجاءوا على قميصه بدم كذب قال بل سولت لكم أنفسكم أمرا فصبر جميل فصبر جميل فصبر جميل والله المستعان على ما تصفون وجاءت سيارة فأرسلوا واردهم فأدلى دلوه قال يا بشرى هذا غلام وأسروه بضاعة والله عليم بما يعملون
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم وفقنا من الأقوال والأعمال لما تحبه وترضى Insha'Allah ta'ala, as you know, we're going to be going through the tafsir of Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf, insha'Allah ta'ala. Before we start, Surah Yusuf is a Meccan surah. It was sent down in Mecca. There's some khilaf, small difference of opinion with the beginning seven verses. Lakin, as Imam al Suyuti mentions, that this is not a strong claim. So it's a Meccan surah. The second point is, the surah is not mentioned anywhere else except in Surah to Yusuf. The story of Surah Yusuf is only mentioned once in the entire Quran, and that is the 13 pages of Surah to Yusuf. Yusuf السلام, is only mentioned two more times in the Quran, and those two times is in the context of saying that he is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a list of other messengers. Ata, he says, لا يسمع سورة يوسف محزون إلا استراح بها. He says nobody listens and hears to Surah Yusuf who's sad except that this person finds com comfort and ease. Nobody on the face of this earth who hears with understanding and listens to Surah to Yusuf and comprehends the Surah and he's in a sad, depressed state except that this person's state will change. Khalid ibn Ma'dan, he says, the Surah to Yusuf wa Maryam mimma yatafakkahu bihi ahlul jannati fil jannah. Surah Yusuf and Surah Maryam it's from those things that the people of Jannah are going to rejoice with in Jannah. The story of it, the things he goes through, the beginning, the end, the hardships. In Jannah, the people of Jannah are going to be rejoicing just like they're going to be rejoicing with food and drink. They're going to be rejoicing with Surah to Yusuf. The last point before we start, Surah to Yusuf when was it sent down and why was it sent down? It was sent down in Amul Huzm. As we know, the Prophet وسلم, he went through a specific year where they called the year of sorrow, the year of hardship. He وسلم, that year Khadija anha died. Likewise, his uncle. Likewise, Mecca at that time, there was a lot of turmoil and difficulty that they were already giving him. It was the year that he felt the most sorrow and hardship, the year that he went through prosecution, the year which was the most difficult year for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the entire Surah Yusuf in this year of sorrow. Now brothers, before again we go into the Surah, Allah Rabbul Izzah, he doesn't mention stories in the Quran for no reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't mention stories just for us to hear and listen why does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention and narrate to us stories why would allah decide 13 pages of the quran an entire chapter purely speaking about a story the beginning all the way to the end allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he first said لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة. In their stories are lessons. The word ibara, what, what does it normally translate to mean? Ibra. Indeed, in their stories are, are what? Ibra. Lessons. The word ibara comes from abara, which means to cross. It means to cross water, or a canal, or a river, or a sea. You say, عَبَرْتُ الْبَحْرَ وَعَبَرْتُ النَّيْلَةِ You cross over a sea. 
The reason why the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and generally the stories in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, indeed in their stories are ibara, is because it's supposed to touch you in a way that causes eyes to flow and cross from the inside of your eyes down to your cheeks. That's why the word ibara was used to describe a lesson. We're meant to take them in, we're meant to listen to them, we're meant to really understand what does Allah want from us. It isn't for you to listen to when you're going to bed. The second reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these stories to us is mentioned in the surah just before it. And look what Allah said in Surah Al-Hud. If you look at the ending of Surah Al-Hud, and this is another i'jaz, miracle of the Qur'an. Allah said, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ All of these stories we're telling you, O Muhammad, regarding the stories of the prophets, we are doing this so we can make your heart firm and give you 100% certainty. This is the truth. What's the next surah? After Allah said, we narrate to you these stories so that we can make you firm, and make your heart firm, make you someone who's standing on two feet and doesn't waver. As soon as Allah said that, what did he say? Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al Mubin. Inna Anzalnahu Quran and Arabian La Alakum Takirun. Nahnu Nakusu Aleka Ahsan Al Kasasi Bima Ohena Ilika Had Al Quran. Look, the ending of Surah Tuhud. We narrate to you, O Muhammad, the stories so that we may make your heart firm. And then Allah decides to narrate 13 pages of Surah to Yusuf. Ala kulli hal, I want us to really take in Surah to Yusuf, the benefits, the gems, and really take in life lessons, things that we can implement into our lives, insha'Allah ta'ala. I want to first touch upon one question before we continue. I said Surah to Yusuf is only mentioned one time in the Quran. And that is Surah to Yusuf. It's never mentioned again anywhere else. Why is it that other stories of the prophets, their stories are mentioned here and there in different places? What's the story that is most mentioned in the Quran? Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam is mentioned in many places, not just one place. Many different places. Likewise, Ibrahim alayhi salam, likewise, Hud, likewise, uh, all, of, all of the prophets. Why is that the case? Who can answer that? Why is it that the story of Yusuf is just in these 13 pages and is never mentioned again? It's not repeated often, but other ones are. Who has an idea? And then we'll begin, inshallah ta'ala. Why didn't he just why didn't Allah put it in one place clear enough like Surah Yusuf? Anyone else? The reason is Imam al Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions the fact that he says because what Allah wants from Surah to Yusuf is different to what he wants from other prophets, their stories. Allah wants from Surah Yusuf, take this story, understand it, really soak it up, and then change your lives through it. Let it be an educational story for you. Let it be a life-changing story for you because everybody here today can relate to his story. Other prophets, however, the intent behind mentioning their stories is to warn the people about punishment. Say to you, this is what we've done to so-and-so, so don't do this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The way we're going to explain it, as we always do it as well, as I always do it, is I'm going to go through the word for word translation of inshallah the passage and then I'm going to stop and explain and then I'm going to go back to it a second time and explain it again inshallah ta'ala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alif Lam Ra Allahu a'lamu bi muradihi bi hadhihi al-huruf Allah knows the intent with these letters Tilka those are Ayatul Kitabi, they are verses of a book, Al Mubini, a clear book. Inna indeed we. Anzalnahu, we sent down it. 
Quran and Arabian being in a state of an Arabic Quran, we send down the Quran. We send the Quran down in an Arabic form. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ So that you may ta'qiluna understand. نَحْنُ we نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ We will narrate to you, O Muhammad, أحسن القصص From the best of stories. بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا Through our revelation, إِلَيْكَ to you, هذا القرآن, this Quran. Through the revelation of this Quran, we are going to narrate to you the best of stories. وَإِن كُنْتَ The matter is as follows. You used to be, O Muhammad, مِنْ قَبَلِهِ Before this revelation, a مِنْ قَبْلِ إِحَاءِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ From those who are heedless, who did not know this story. إِذْ قَالَ mentioned to them, O Muhammad, when Yusuf alayhi salam said, لِأَبِيهِ to his father. The story starts here. Ya abati, O my father, inni I ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban. I saw eleven stars. Was shamsa and I saw the sun, wal kamara and the moon. Ra'aytuhum, I saw them li sajidina prostrating to me. Qala Yusuf's father said, Ya bunayya, O my son. لا تقصص رؤياك Do not narrate your story على إخوتك to your brothers. Why? فيكيدوا لك They are going to plot against you. كيدن a plotting. إن الشيطان indeed شيطان. للإنسان is to mankind عدو مبين a clear enemy. وكذلك and just like this, the way Allah He chose you in the dream that we're going to mention. يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ Your Lord is going to choose you and make you a prophet. وَيُعَلِّمُكَ And He will teach you مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَدِيثِ From the interpretation of dreams. وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ And He will also complete His favor upon you. وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ And upon the family of Ya'qub. كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا Just like He had bestowed that blessing and completed it عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْكَ Upon your two fathers. مِنْ قَبْلُ Before you. Or مِنْ قَبْلُ أي مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا Before this. Who are they? Ibrahim wa Ishaq. Just like Allah had favored your two fathers, forefathers, He will also complete His favor upon you. And Ali Yaqub. إِنَّ رَبَّكِ Indeed your Lord. عَلِيمٌ He's all-knowing. حَكِيمٌ He's one who's wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He starts to narrate the story. But before we do that, I want to touch upon Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam is vital for us to understand these verses, but also for us to understand Yusuf alayhi salam's story. Ibrahim alayhi salam, as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made his legacy to be that he builds the house of Allah. And then people come to it from all corners of the earth. Until today, when we go to the Haram, to the Kaaba, it's the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave Ibrahim alayhi salam a virtuous, virtuous status. Allah took him as a khalil, as a close companion, as a close friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, commanded Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in fact, Muhammad's legacy is technically what? To fulfill the legacy of who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. By calling the people to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house and continue the legacy of Tawheed. A conversation happens between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ibrahim alayhi salam. That conversation is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says to Ibrahim, Inni ja'ilu nasi imama. You have to understand this, guys. You have to understand this. Without understanding Ibrahim alayhi salam and his offspring, Yusuf alayhi salam is not going to make sense to you. Likewise, Yusuf alayhi salam is also connected to Musa alayhi salam. So this is an important context. Allah says, Inni ja'iluka linnasi imama. I'm going to make you, O Ibrahim, a leader for the people. What was his reply? He became worried that, okay, O oh Allah, you're going to make me a leader. But he said, Qala wa min What about my offspring? If I'm on the straight path, you make me a prophet, you make me a leader, what about my offspring? So he had great importance and thought 
About who? His offspring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied and said what? لا ينال عهد الظالمين O oh Ibrahim, just because I make you a prophet, it doesn't mean that everybody else can just because they're from your offspring. لا. But rather those who oppress themselves and the people, if your offspring are bad, then they are not going to get my blessing of prophethood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the first point. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he makes dua to ask for a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his offspring. There's another... Com- what comes from there is who? Ismail alayhi salam. Who was Ismail's father? Ibrahim. And what did they do? They built the Kaaba together. What happens after that? Ibrahim alayhi salam gets old. And he also wants a child. He wants another child. He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives him another child despite his old age. Who does Allah give him? Later on. Who? Ishaq. Listen very, very, very carefully to this. Ishaq, later on what happens? He's going to have children and who's going to be his son? From his sons? Yaqub. Yaqub is going to have how many children? 12. He has two wives. If you guys didn't know, he has two wives. He married one. That one passed away. And then he married who? Her sister. And then he had two children with that. So there's two wives. One of them is the older one. He has 10 children with that wife. Then the younger one, he has more children but only two. These are Yusuf and who? Binyamin. Who's in English? Benjamin. So I'd say that one more time. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he makes dua to Allah, he gives him an offspring that becomes a prophet, a messenger, etc, etc. Or from his offspring, he wants messengers, prophets. Amongst them is who? Ismail. Who Allah blesses. And Ismail comes along, and he's a prophet. And he builds the Kaaba with him, he continues his legacy with him, etc. He also has Ishaq. Ishaq, he has who? Yaqub. Yaqub has who? Not just Yusuf. He has two wives, 12 children, two and 10. Why is that important? Yusuf coming along and his story is critical in later on. It's one of the miracles in the Quran, in fact. Because what happens later? Bani Israel are the children of Yaqub. The name of whenever you hear Israel, it's Yaqub. Anytime you hear Israel, Israelites, it's talking about Yaqub's children. Bani Israel is the children of who? Yaqub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Yaqub alayhi salam all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every single messenger to come is from where? It's from that progeny. You name it. Every single one of them, Yahya, Dawood, all of them, any prophet from Yaqub alayhi salam, his children, those 12, they have children, who have children, who have offspring, they are the ones the prophets come from. So Musa alayhi salam is also through, sent to who? Bani Israel. There's a connection we're going to make between Musa and Yusuf alayhi salam, which is one of the miracles in the Quran, I'll come on to after, insha'Allah ta'ala. So that's one thing. What about Ismail? Ismail alayhi salam is connected to who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So technically the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam was made true. Now Ibrahim alayhi salam, sorry, not Ibrahim alayhi salam, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said regarding Yusuf alayhi salam, Two characteristics that I want us to stand upon. He said that he was given shatarul husn or shatarul jamal. Another riwayah says he was given half of beauty. Another description he gives him is he was asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, by one of the companions, who is from the best of people when it comes to lineage on the face of this earth? He said, Yusuf. Why? 
هو الكريم ابن الكريم ابن الكريم ابن الكريم he is the noble the son of the noble the son of the noble the son of the noble Yusuf alayhi salam Allah mentions in these verses he has a dream and this dream that he has this is the story now that was the context done the story is that Yusuf alayhi salam he has a dream when he has this dream he sees 11 stars the sun and the moon who prostrate to him the first question you can ask yourself is is this not haram is this not shirk why is it that his father who's Yaqub, who's also a prophet of allah he doesn't warn him against that how comes likewise are we allowed to do that we're going to come onto it but he wakes up and then he goes to his father the first thing he does is he goes to his father Yaqub, and he says oh my father i saw a dream in that dream i saw 11 stars the sun and the moon prostrating to me his father replies to him straight away and he says oh my son do not narrate your story to your brothers which brothers are you talking about the 11 brothers you have do not narrate your story to them at all why is that the case they're going to get jealous once they get jealous what are they going to do they're going to plot against you a plotting they're going to try to kill you they're going to try to torture you they're going to try to get you off this earth they're going to do something to plot against you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he concludes that part by saying that oh Yusuf just like we had bestowed the blessing just like Allah first of all he blessed you by choosing you in the dream to have that dream he's going to choose you to become a prophet Yusuf alayhi salam is not a prophet at the moment he doesn't have revelation he's not a messenger of Allah he's just a normal baby boy nothing else Allah said Allah will number one make you a prophet number two he's going to bestow his blessing upon you by giving you authority on this earth just like he had blessed your forefathers Ibrahim and who and Ishaq then what happens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah is all wise and he's all knowing there's a reason why this dream is happening just make sure that you do not tell them let's go through those verses qala allah ta'ala allah said alif lam ra alif lam ra alif lam mim alif lam mim sad qaf noon all of these verses in the quran are called huruf al there's many tafsir you are going to hear the correct tafsir is Allahu a'lamu bi muradi hadhi al huruf Only Allah knows the intent behind them. Why is it in the Quran is the question. We don't know the meaning of them, but the intent behind why Allah puts something in the Quran that we don't know, we know. This is to say to the disbelievers of Quraysh, there's letters of the Arabic language that are in the Quran that you yourselves don't know the meaning of. It's i'jaz. It's to show that the Quran is a miracle. Tilka. Tilka is that. It's the feminine of dhalika. What does dhalika mean? That. What does hadha mean? This. What's the feminine of hadha? Hadhi. Hadhi is to show something which is close and hadha. Dhalika that, male. Tilka that, feminine, is to show something very far. Was in the Quran with the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why is Allah saying tilka that those verses over there? They are the verses of a clear book. The reason for that is, and that's the same as Dalik al Kitabu La Rayba fi Hudalil Muttaqin. There's two forms of being far. The first one is being far in, th- in terms of distance. The second one is because of how honorable the Quran is and how the sharaf of the Quran and how eloquent the Quran is and how amazing the Quran is, it is far ma'nawi. Ma'nawi, what's ma'nawi in English? Technically, metaphorically, it's far. This Quran is so amazing, it's all the way over there. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Inna anzalnahu, we send on this Quran, Arabiyan, as an Arabic language. The second benefit here is, brothers, learning the Arabic language is vital. It's so sad, unfortunately, I probably am not going to be able to go through 70% of the benefits that can be extracted only through the Arabic language. It's not possible. I'm going to try to one or two, but because we're not Arabs, and I believe the majority won't understand, I'm not going to do it. But I highly, highly advise every single person, the Arabic language is not for the Arabs. Arabic language is for us, me and you. It's our language. It doesn't belong to a certain ethnicity, it belongs to the Muslims. Look what Allah said. Why did Allah choose the Arabic language? It isn't so you enjoy. It isn't so you can uh, relax with it. La. So you can really truly understand the Quran. There's the opposite meaning of that which is. If you do not understand the Quran, you won't be able to under, understand and comprehend it 100%. It's impossible. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ We are going to narrate to you عَلَيْكَ upon you أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ From the best of stories بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَيْ بِإِحَائِنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Through us revealing to you the Qur'an we are going to reveal to you the story of Yusuf which is amongst the best of stories وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ If you understand this, you understand. If you don't, don't worry. وَإِن كُنْتَ is إِنَّهُ كُنْتَ it's inna, which is mukhaffafa, min al thaqila, because it's heavy on the tongue. The ha, which is a damir, got moved away, but it's actually wa inna hu. It's called damir al sha'an. That damir hu means the matter is as follows. It's the same as. What's the last part of Surah Al Muzammil? Alima an sayakunu minkum marda. Alima anna hu sayakunu minkum marda. وَإِن كُنْتَ أَيْ وَإِنَّهُ The matter is as follows, O people. كُنْتَ you, a Yusuf alayhi, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مِنْ قَبَلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ He was from the heedless. Doesn't mean Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was heedless. What does it mean? Regarding the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, you didn't know it. You were heedless about it. One of the miracles of this story is, how did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came generations after Yusuf alayhi salam, know the details of this story? intricate details and I'm gonna also go to how it's connected to Musa alayhi salam it's another great miracle of the Quran if we look at this is off topic if we look at Surah Al Qasas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Musa alayhi salam who was sent to Fir'aun and his people right Fir'aun, when he heard, Surah Al-Qasas speaks about the Surah of Musa, the beginning part of it. Surah Al-Qasas, Allah mentions that when Fir'aun was told about the message of Musa, what was his reply? He said, مَا هَذَا إِلَّا مُفْتَرَى Number one, this is nothing but a lie. It's been made up, it's forged. وَمَا سَمِعْنَا بِهَذَا فِي آبَائِنَا الْأَوَّلِينَ Listen carefully to this. We've never heard this from our forefathers. Who's he saying this to? Musa alayhi salam. Who is saying this? Fir'aun. The Quran, one of the miracles, again, how did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam know this? Pay attention to this. What were some of the things that Musa alayhi salam and Yusuf alayhi salam shared? Guys, if you just go through the stories of the Qur'an without putting context and linking them together, you'll be confused. Completely confused. So try to understand the link. What are some of the things that Musa and Yusuf shared? They both separated from their family, okay? Both placed in Egypt. This is vital. It's going to prove how what Fir'aun said is a complete lie. They were both sent to Egypt as one. Hey, yeah. Any other? They both had brothers that are prophets, okay? Reword that in a way which gets to what I'm trying to get to. 
It's linked to lineage slash people. They were both sent to own people, okay? The second, eh? Okay, but that's not related to this specific point. The, answer, the second point which is vital is they were both Israelites. Why is this historically a miracle from the Quran? Listen carefully to this. Yusuf alayhi salam, he's in Egypt. We're going to get to later on in the story. He goes to Egypt and becomes a king. He becomes the minister of finance. He becomes an emir, etc. But he wasn't just a normal man in Egypt. He was not just a normal man in Egypt. Likewise, he wasn't silent about what he believes. He portrayed, he's a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He portrayed his message. Even in prison, he's giving da'wah. In fact, his family later on, when they find him and see him, what does he do? His parents, what did he do? He raised them upon the throne, i.e. the parliament. They became part of the parliament. Their discussions of them reuniting, Allah making their dream you know, come true, it was practically a public speech within the parliament. The question is, if someone is doing something like that and of such status, the likelihood is practically impossible that Yusuf alayhi salam, him being an Israelite, likewise being in Egypt, and then Fir'aun comes later, it's impossible. It's like right now if someone said Boris Johnson and comes later, he's in the history books. You're going to know him if you're there. But listen carefully to this. The answer is in Surah to Ghafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another name of Surah Ghafir is Surah Mu'min. The reason why it's called Surah Tul Mu'min is because of the believer. You know the secret believer? That is mentioned in Surah Tul Ghafir, who is the policeman, which I'm going to come on to now. That's the reason why he's, it's called Surah Tul Mu'min. In Surah Tul Ghafir, there's a long speech that takes place in that Surah. It's the, it's the speech of a man who is not a prophet. Allah said, Ja'a min aqsa al He came from the lowest parts of the city. This man was a police, of, uh, police officer at the time in which Musa alayhi salam, he punched, you know when he punched someone and he accidentally killed him? He was the police officer that was assigned to deal with that case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that this man, he became a Muslim secretly. He secretly became a Muslim. Later on we see, he says to Musa, later on he helps Musa alayhi salam because he finds out years later that Fir'aun and his people are doing what? They're plotting to kill Musa alayhi salam. How does he know this? He's a police officer. He's taking part in these meetings because later on he's also given a promotion. He becomes a chief, he becomes a leader, military leader. He's in these private gatherings where they are plotting against Musa to kill him. So what does he say to him? فخرج إني لك من الناصحين. But look at this. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He tells us years and years later, Musa alayhi salam is being plotted against to be killed by Fir'aun and his people, and this police officer he's in there in that specific court case, and then he gets up, and what does he say? He refutes the claim of Fir'aun. What did Fir'aun say? This that Musa is coming with is number one, a lie. Number two, we haven't heard it from our forefathers. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this man got up and he started to plead. Are you going to kill a man who's just saying, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it's the same as what the previous prophets came with. Yusuf said the same thing. What did he say after? وَلَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ يُوسُفُ مِنْ قَبَلُ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ He said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, Yusuf came to you, Fir'aun and your forefathers, with the clear signs. فَمَا زِلْتُمْ فِي شَكْ And you are still in doubt. حَتَّى إِذَا هَلَكْ until he died, the moment Yusuf alayhi salam died, what did you guys say? 
Allah is never going to send a messenger again. In a nutshell, the people of Fir'aun knew of Yusuf. Yusuf is vital later on in the story of Musa. If you look into the Old Testament, in fact, when you look at the end of the Old Testament, around Genesis and this area, the last story which is mentioned in the Old Testament is who? The story of Yusuf alayhi salam, and then it cuts off there. And then what comes after that? At the beginning of the New Testament, Musa alayhi salam, and his story. So historically, when we look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, it's also a miracle. The fact that the Muhammad sallallahu he knew the story of this man who came from Aqsa al-Madinah, then he stands in his court case and he has the word with him, etc. How did he know these things? How did he know these things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ When Yusuf said li abihi to his father, Ya abati, oh my father. Ya abati. Used to be ya abi. Like in the ba was replaced with ta. And the reason for that is to make it soft, a respectful. Ya abati is different to ya abi. The Basriyun, they do that. Ya abati, oh my father. Inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkab and I've seen 11 stars. والشمس, and I've seen the sun. The sun is his mother. والقمر, and I've seen the moon. The moon is later going to be his father. Why was the sun his mother and the moon his father? Who has an idea? The word shams, by the way, this is just an interpretation of the Mufassirun. When you look at Jalal, uh, Tafsir al Jalalain, Tafsir al Jalalain is one of the most famous Tafsir book which is written by two brothers. Jalaluddin, uh, no, no, no. Jalaluddin al-Mahalli and Jalaluddin al-Suyuti. They lived in the same time. One of them wrote the first 15 ajza and then he passed away. And then Suyuti came after and wrote the other 15 ajza from Kaf onwards. Jalaluddin al-Suyuti or Mahalli, who's going to say this? Surah Yusuf. So Mahalli was first and then Suyuti. Who's going to comment on this? Why? It's the first 15. He says the shams is who? The mom or the dad? The mom. Because the word shams is feminine ma'nawi. But qamar doesn't take a feminine. Okay? So he sees the sun, the moon, and 11 stars. The 11 stars are his 11 brothers. The 10 from one wife, and the one brother, Binyamin, that was from the same mother. What happens after that? He says, I saw them, ra'aytum li sajideen. Qala ya bunayya, oh my son. Ya bunayya is tasghiru tashrif. It's again, instead of saying, ya ibni, oh my son. Ya Bunayya is a form of saying it in a nice, soft, respectable manner. Look, he didn't say to his son, Oh my son, or oh kid. He said, Ya Bunayya, my son. This is a lesson for the fathers. When you speak to your children, likewise your daughters, your, your, your sons, you should address them in a soft, respectable manner. In that way, inshallah, they're going to love you more. They're going to trust you more. They'll be more vulnerable to you. And your relationship will be better. Likewise, the sons. Say to your father, Daddy. Instead of, huh? Instead of Akhi. Nowadays they say Akhi Ahad. La taqasus ruyaka. Do not narrate your story to your brothers. Brothers, the first benefit we take from here is, from this story, is the reality of jealousy. This is a messenger of Allah, number one. And number two, they are his blood brothers. Allah is saying, do not narrate the story to them whatever you do imagine your young brother plotting against you to kill you your young brother plotting against you to do something to you just because you've seen a dream and that dream might be good the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said make sure you protect your life plans good things likewise that happen to you bil kitman by covering them up secrecy don't tell people the things you plan to do why فَإِنَّ كُلَّ ذِي نِعْمَةٍ محسود. Every single person who has a blessing is envied. Kulla ni'matin was the word he used. 
Kulla, every single person. What does that mean? What does that mean? You might not know who it is, but if you have a blessing, there's someone out there who's jealous about you. You're probably thinking, but I know all my friends, I know my mom and dad wouldn't be like that. There's someone, perhaps even the unseen. There might be jinn, there might be, who are yani, jealous of what you have. So don't go around telling people your blessings. Likewise, don't go around telling people of your future plans. Allah said the reason why they are going to be jealous. Are they going to be jealous because they're evil, evil people? No. Inna shaytana, indeed shaytan, is to mankind aduun mubin. This is the reason why. Your biggest enemy is shaytan. Your biggest enemy, the one who wants to take you to jahannam, the one who, who wants to cause adawa, and yani, animosity and hatred between the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then said, وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed you, just like Allah showed you the dream and chose you later to have these blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you a prophet. This is one of the prophecies of the Qur'an. How did Muhammad sallallahu know that Ya'qub is saying this? Ya'qub is saying, oh my son, just like Allah had chosen you in the dream, you're going to become a prophet later on. The other benefit we take is so far, dream interpretation is a thing. Dream interpretation is a thing. And there's many people from the Tabi'een, even from the companions of Umar al-Khattab, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, there's certain companions, even Tabi'een of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are very intricate when it comes to dream interpretation. An example, insha'Allah ta'ala, or in fact, we'll come on to that later, insha'Allah. No, inshallah, I'll mention it now. An example of someone who was very intricate and a master of dream interpretation. Many people say dream interpretation akhi, is fake. How can you know the future? How can you know it's like it's a thing? Yaqub alayhi salam, the evidence is here. Allah mentioned in the Quran. But there's other examples as well. It's mentioned in Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad that Umar ibn al-Habib he narrates that one day he saw in his dream, this is a tabi'i. He saw in his dream Sa'ad uh, ibn Abi Waqqas. What happened with him? He came to me, he said, I saw a dream that a man had came and he grabbed Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. When he grabbed him, he strangled him, he caused him to die, and then he nailed him with four nails. What happened after that? He said to him, no, 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 you're lying. You didn't see this. You see how he knows his dreams. He already knows that it wasn't you that saw it. He said, la, 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 it wasn't you that saw it. He said, it was Sa'id ibn Musayyib. He sent you and said, come to me so I can interpret the dream for you. But you don't want to say that. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, that's not going to happen. He, in fact, is going to kill him. It's not the other way around. He is going to kill him. And who was Abdul Malik ibn Marwan? He was at that time the Khalifa. He was the leader. He said, another thing that also means is that when he passes away, he's going to have four of his children that will become Khalifa. What happened after that? Yusuf ibn al-Hajjaj, who was the Amir for Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, was sent to kill him. So technically, who killed him? Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He had four children. Four children who likewise became the Khalifa, one after the other. Once one died, the other one took over. One died, the other one took over. One died, one of them took over. Walid ibn Abdul Malik, Sulaiman, Hashim. Who knows the last one? Yazid. So the Quran ala kulli hal confirms for us that dream interpretation is a thing. Likewise, Tabi'een, even Hafsa is mentioned that she was a good inter dream interpreter as well. We have Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, Sa'id ibn Musayyib, and others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
لَقَدَ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ Indeed in the story of Yusuf وَإِخْوَتِهِ and his brothers آيَاتٌ are signs لِسَّائِلِينَ for those who ask What does that mean? It's not going to be of benefit for those who are not eager Those who ask means when someone asks questions what happens? They're eager to learn, they're eager to find out, they're eager to understand What happened after that? I'll read it again and then explain إِذْ قَالُوا when he said Sorry, إِذْ قَالُوا when they said لَيُوسُفُ يُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ and his brother Binyamin أَحَبُّ إِلَىٰ أَبِينَا He's more beloved to our father minna from us Compared to us Yusuf and his brother Binyamin is more beloved than us وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَ The reason was whilst we are a clan First of all, we are a large group We are ten, they are two But secondly, we are the ones who work because we're the older generation of course our mother was older the reason why they had an issue with that was because we work Yusuf and his brother don't even work we're providing for the family we're doing everything why is it the case then inna abana indeed our father lafi dalalin is in misguidance how can he be in misguidance he's a prophet it's the linguistic meaning Indeed, our father illa fi dalanin illa fi khata'in. He's made a big mistake. He's committed a mistake. This is something wrong. What happened after that? Uqtulu Yusuf a kill Yusuf. Awitrahuhu or cast him aradan a bi aradin. Cast him on to the earth. And he throw him into the earth. We'll see how they do that. What's going to happen? Yakhlu lakum wajhu abikum. The attention of your father, of our father. Is going to be only for us. If we kill Yusuf or we cast him out of the earth and send him somewhere else, what's going to happen? All the attention will be for us. There's no other children, it's just us ten. So do this. وَتَكُونُ And after you do this, مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Once you do this, after you do it, you are going to become قَوْمًا A people that people who are صَالِحِينَ are righteous. قَالَ قَائِلُ مِنْهُمْ One of them said, لا تقتلوا, do not kill Yusuf or Yusuf وَأَلْقُوهُ But throw him inside في غيابة الجب into a well يَلْتَقِطُهُ بَعْضُ السيارة. A group of travelers are going to pick him إِن كُنْتُمْ If you are going to فَاعِلِينَ Do what you're going to do If you're going to do something Then don't kill him Don't cast him on somewhere else But rather throw him down a well قَالُوا Then they said Ya Abana, O our father, ma laka, what is the matter? La ta'manna, you do not trust us. Ala Yusuf, you don't trust us with Yusuf. Wa inna lahu, and we are to him, la nasihuna, we wish good for him. Arsilhu ma'ana, send him with us. Ghadan tomorrow. Yarta' he will enjoy. Wa yal'ab, and he will play with us. Wa inna lahu, and we are going to be to him, la hafiduna, ones who protect him and look after him. What happened after that was Yusuf alayhi salam, he just had this dream. His father tells him, Don't tell your brothers, they're gonna be jealous of you. You're gonna become a prophet. You're gonna be someone of great virtue. Allah's gonna bestow his bounty upon you by making you likewise a minister and a king later on. You're gonna get dunya and akhirah. Don't tell your brothers. They got together. And they said, What is the matter? Yusuf alayhi salam, he's always been more beloved to our father than his brother, uh, sorry, him and his brother are more beloved to his father than us. Why did they say, la wa Yusuf and his brother? Why did they say Yusuf and his brother are more beloved to our father than us? They're all brothers. Why do you say his brother? Why do you say Yusuf and our brother bin Yamin, who's also their brother? Why? They have different mothers. So it's as if they have this hatred from young, this jealousy from young. They separated. They say, look, that's him and this is us. Who did Yaqub love more? He loved Yusuf more than bin Yamin as well. There's difference of opinion, the reason why, why that's the case and everything else, we won't go into it. Once they said that, they said, let's come together and come with a plan. 
the first group they said let's kill him if we're not going to kill him we need to send him somewhere else he can live elsewhere we're going to kick him out of the city the country the village he's going to live elsewhere one of them stood up and said no 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 guys he's our brother if we are going to do anything what we should do is throw him into a well why do you think they said that he said that But why would him, he cared about Yusuf. Why would he throw him into a well if he cared about him? Is it no worse to throw him into a well? That's the reason. People that are stranded, that are travelers, they're walking past, that are perhaps going to go and look for some water because they have no water. What can they do? They can find him and then sell him later on as a slave. So they basically thought about other people. Then they go to their father and they inquire. They said, Oh, our father, why is it that you never wish that Yusuf comes with us, plays with us, relaxes with us? You don't trust us with him. Why? Every time you tell us ten to go, but Yusuf is in her, let him stay with me. You, in fact, bring Binyamin with us as well. The reason for that, he knows who? Yaqub knows. Because of what he's going to become, he has to, he wants to protect him, look after him, etc. So he begs and says, Oh, my father, oh, our father, please let him come with us. Now he mentions the reason. He says, Qala inni I'll tell you the reason. There's two reasons. The first reason is, it upsets me that you go with him. One, him being away from me, not in my presence. I want to see Yusuf, he's my young son, I love him, etc. Him being away, it makes me sad. Secondly, وَأَخَافُ and I fear أَن يَأْكُلَهُ الذِّئْبُ That a wolf will eat him. وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ This is Allah teaching Yaqub to be wary of not allowing this because this is going to happen later. He's a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a prophet of Allah. وَأَنْتُمْ whilst you people anhu ghafilun, you're heedless about him. Qalu, what was their reply? لَإِنْ أَكَلَهُ الذِّئْبُ If a wolf eats him, وَنَحْنُ and we are a group, we are a clan, we are one family. Then we are losers. How can we allow that to happen? Let's touch upon this. Why did they give the answer to one of the reasons but not the other? What was the first reason? It makes me sad that he's away from me and not in my presence. And the second reason was, I fear that a wolf is going to eat him. They solved the first, uh, second one. They said, we're going to look after him. We're going to make sure he's not going to be eaten. If he is eaten and we are his brothers, we're a group, we're one clan, then this is stupid of us. This is very uh, dim-witted of us. But they didn't deal with It makes me sad. Why? Hmm? One ego. They didn't want to go in that chapter. They didn't want to speak about that topic. It's jealousy again. Ghira. Imagine your father loves a specific son out of the children. And he's always praising him. He says, Allah, I want him to be with me. I love him ever so much. I get sad when he's not near me, etc, etc. You're going to try to put that under the carpet. The second reason is because they actually didn't have a solution for that. They actually didn't have any solution for that. قال الله تعالى الله said فلما ذهبوا به so when they went with him when they went with and they took Yusuf عليه السلام وأجمعوا and they had come to a consensus أن يجعلوه that they put him في غيابة الجب in this well فعلوه they done it the job is محذوف look فلما ذهبوا به when they went with Yusuf 
and they had come to a consensus to put him in this well, uh, where, where's the reply? This is one of the ijaz of the Quran. If I, if I said to you today, when I went to the masjid and then I stayed silent, what, what would your response be? When I was on my way to the masjid today, what would, my response, what would your response be? And I just stayed silent. What? What's your answer? What happened? Carry on, okay? The Quran does this a lot. It's one of the linguistic miracles. Look here. فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا When they went to be with Yusuf, وَأَجَمَعُوا And they had come to a consensus أَنْ يَجْعَلُوهُ فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبْ That they put him in this well. is mahdhuf. فَعَلُوهُ They done it. What happened after that? وَأَوْحَيْنَا and we had, we had revealed to Yusuf alayhi salam, ilayhi to him, لَتُنَبِّئَنَّهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِمْ هَذَا Oh Yusuf, don't worry. Later on you are going to tell them هَذَا regarding this thing they're doing to you. وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they don't even know. وَجَاءُوا So they came. أَبَاهُمْ They came to their father. عِشَاءً In the night. يَبَكُونَ Whilst they were crying. قَالُوا They said. Ya Abana, O our father, inna dhahabana, we went, nastabiqu to race, wa tarakna Yusufa, and we left Yusuf in the mata'ina with our belongings. Fa'akalahu al-dhibu, and a wolf ate him. Wa ma anta bi mu'minin lana, you're never gonna believe us. Walau kunna sadiqin, even if we're telling the truth. Wa ja'u, and they came. Ala qamisihi, with his thobe, his shirt bidamin kadib with a false blood. They got blood on it and they came to the father. They said, Look, this is what happened. Their father said, Qala he said, lakum anfusukum. La, this is not the case. Stop lying. Your souls have beautified to you Amran the matter. This thing you're doing, he wasn't eaten by a wolf. But your souls, your desires has beautified for you the action which you have done. فَصَبَرٌ جَمِيلٌ A amri sabarun jamil. My matter is just patience. Beautiful patience. That's all I can do. Wallahu and Allah. Al-Musta'anu. He is the one that I should seek help from. عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ Regarding that which you do. What happened next was, they took Yusuf to play with him, to enjoy whatever they were going to do. And whilst they are all playing around, they left him. They went to one corner, they left him in another corner, and they started to play with, with one another, and then they went to him. Once they went to him, what did they do? They put him inside this well. He's inside this well, he doesn't know what to do, darkness, no food, he's a young baby boy, doesn't know anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he revealed to Yusuf at this young age whilst he's in this well Yusuf don't worry don't worry about this later on you are going to tell your brothers what they've done to you later in the story again this is a miracle later in the story we are going to see when he becomes the king of Egypt his brothers they find him later on and he tells them look what you've done to me again it's a miracle they don't even know you're going to do that. Then what did these young, dim-witted young boys do? They decided our father is going to ask us where he is. And he told us that he is sad when he's away. And he told us that a wolf will eat him. So let's just cover it up by saying a wolf ate him. But they said we need to be smart about this. We can't just go to our father and say a wolf ate him. So again, Tafsir Al-Jalalain, the Futuhat mentioned that they slaughtered a goat and then they got his shirt, they wiped some of the blood on the blood of the goat, then they went to the father in the night time. Why did they go to him in the night? There's two reasons, because we're running out of time. The first one is obvious. When someone is lying, the majority of the time, where do you see the lie obvious on them? Their face. Allah said they came to the father in the night. So when they are lying to him, the father won't see their face. The father's not going to be able to see their face. The obvious face that's lying, he's not going to feel that they're lying. Who can take a guess for the second reason? That's the second reason. 
He's also going to feel tired. Maybe he wants to go sleep. He won't maybe have a lot of time. And this is an opportunity. We can go to him, make our lie, and then go. The father said, no, 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 no. He's a prophet of Allah, Yaqub, remember. He said, you people, this is not true. You've done something to him. And I don't know what you've done, but whatever you have done, shaitan has beautified that for you. All I can do is be patient. My matter is beautiful patience. For sabarun jameel, what's the difference between sabar and sabarun jameel? Patience is patience we know. What's a beautiful patience? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions and says, beautiful patience is the patience that doesn't necessarily have complaining. You're not going around saying this happened to me, that happened to me. It's a beautiful patience. What does he say later on in the surah? إِنَّمَا أَشْخُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I only complain of my hardships and sorrows to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you guys can just move forward, inshallah, it will be appreciated as requested. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Allah said, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا So when they went بِهِ with Yusuf, وَأَجَمَعُوا And they had come to a consensus أَنْ يَجَعَلُوهُ That they put him فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبِّ In the depths of the well. They done so. وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ And we had uh, revealed to him بِأَمْرِهِمْ هَذَا This thing they're doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Yusuf alayhi salam Don't worry about this You're going to inform them later about what they've done to you وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they don't even realize وَجَاءُوا And they came أَبَاهُمْ to their father عِشَاءً In the night يَبْكُونَ crying قَالُوا They said Why are they crying? To act like they care to act like they're sad about their, their brother, you know, being eaten by the wolf. Qalu, they said, Ya Abana, O our father, inna we the habana, we went. Nastabiku to race. Watarakna, we left Yusuf in the mata'ina, we left him which, with our belongings. Fa'akalu, then the wolf ate him. Wama anta, you, O our father, are not going to believe. Bimu'mini lana, you won't believe in us. Walo kunna sadiqin, even if we are truthful. Waja'u, then they came. Ala kamisihi, they came with. His shirt, bidamin kadibin, false blood. Qala bal sawwalat lakum anfusukum amra. The matter is not like that. Oh my sons, you guys have done something else. Shaitan has beautified it for you. Fasabarun jameel. A beautiful patience is my matter. Wallahu and Allah is al musta'anu, the one I seek help. Alama tasifun regarding that which you do. Wajaat sayyaratun and a group of travelers came, far salud, so they sent. وَارِدَهُمْ their water boy فَأَدَلَ دَلْوَهُ Then he let down his bucket. قَالَ Then he said, يَا بُشْرَى Oh, what a glad tiding. هَذَا غُلَام This is a young boy. وَأَسَرُّوهُ Then they took him secretly بِضَاعَةً as a, merch, a merchandise. وَاللَّهُ أَنَا اللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ is all knowing بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ Regarding that which they do. وَشَرَوهُ Then they sold him. بِثَمَنٍ So, uh, وَشَرَوْهُ They sold him. بِثَمَنٍ For an amount, a value. بَخْسٍ A cheap amount. دَرَاهِمَ Silver coins. مَعْدُودَةٍ That you can count yourself. Not a lot of money. وَكَانُوا Then they were regarding him. فِيهِ Regarding Yusuf. مِنَ الزَّاهِدِينَ They were from those who had got rid of him. What happened after that was, a group of travelers were going by what did they end up doing? The thing that one of the brothers said, right? The brother in the beginning of the story said what? Don't kill him. Rather, throw him into a well. One of the travelers that are going by will take him. So that's exactly what happened. A group of traveling were traveling. Uh, sorry, a group of travelers were traveling. And they saw this young boy because they need water. They sent one of the water boy, one of the boys who is the water boy. He put his bucket down. He's trying to get water, trying to get water. He lifts up, lifts up, lifts up. And then he suddenly sees a boy. Ya Bushra, what a glad tiding. We have a boy. Why is them having a young boy something good for them? They can sell him. So that's exactly what they've done. They decided we are going to buy him, sorry. Who's going to sell him? The brothers. His brothers are going to sell Yusuf to who? To who? To who? Who, guys? Only seven, eight people know? The travelers, these people that are traveling, that saw him, the, the brothers are going to sell Yusuf to these travelers. Pay attention. 
But look at how much they sold him for. Bithamanin, a value. Bakhsin, cheap. Not a lot of money. Even more of a description is darahim. Silver coins. They didn't even sell him for golden coins. Ma'duda, you can count them. A small amount. And then they said, forget him, get rid of him. We don't want him. They were done with him. So now we have this young boy. He sold as a slave. La, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go back. They took the boy. Sorry, rewind. They took the boy from the brothers. Those travelers, they sold Yusuf to someone we're going to see now. So that was a small mistake, inshallah. وَقَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَاهُ The man who had bought him مِنْ مِصْرَ From Egypt. He's from Egypt. So the man who bought him is from Egypt. We're going to come on to who he is. He said to his لِمْرَأَةِ To his wife أَكْرِمِي مَثْوَاه Honor his stay. Look after him. Why? Maybe he'll benefit us. Or we can take him as a young boy. Narration has mentioned that they didn't have a child. And just like this. We established Yusuf fil ard on the earth. So that we may teach him min ta'wil al ahadith from the interpretations of dreams. Let's stop here. وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفْ Like this, we are going to, sorry, like this, مَكَّنَّا We have established Yusuf. Look what Allah said. Just like this, we have established Yusuf alayhi salam fil ard. How did Allah establish Yusuf alayhi salam when he's just a slave right now? This, is something that comes regularly in the Quran. You have a past tense verb which is being used by speaking about the future tense. Allah said in Surah Al-An'am, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَقَدَ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ Why is it that you people don't eat from the halal when Allah has فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ This is the part that I want you to concentrate. وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ Allah clarified and made it clear the halal and the haram. Surah An'am is a surah which is makiya, Speaking about akhirah and all of these other things. This ayah, the ayat that are speaking about rulings and everything else, they are madani ayat. Shall I say that one more time? Because I'm going to ask you a question. Shall I say it one more time? Meccan surahs, they speak about akhirah, angels, tawheed, adab, jahannam, etc. Because we're in Mecca, we want the disbelievers to accept Islam. Medina, the people have accepted Islam. So the ayat are going to be about what? Rulings. Surah An'am is a surah Makkiya. This verse I just recited, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Why is it that you don't eat from the things that Allah's name is mentioned upon? وَغَدَ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ And Allah has clarified and made clear that which has made haram upon you. Halal and haram is clear. This ayah is also Meccan. It was sent down in Mecca. But it's speaking about rulings. Shouldn't someone think, no, 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 this is a Madani surah. Because Allah is also saying, I have already made it clear. What rulings did Allah make clear in Mecca? Are there rulings in Mecca? No. So why is Allah saying He's already made clear the halal from the haram? The same thing as I just said now. It's a glad tiding to Muhammad sallam that later on a time will come where the deen will be established and people accept it and everybody will practice the religion of Islam. That's the same as here. كَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Like this we have established Yusuf alayhi salam on the earth. Where did he establish him? He's not established. Allah is saying later O Yusuf you are going to be established on the earth and you have authority. Which is going to happen later on as well. After Salah, we'll do 15 more minutes. Inshallah, we'll summarize. Anything which I have said, 
which is correct is from Allah. Anything wrong, mistake or slip of the tongue is from me and shaitan. And Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma hamdik. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa kutubu alayhi. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If all the brothers can move forward, make space for the other brothers who are waiting outside. And the class will be resuming after the salah for another 15 minutes. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Please straighten the lines, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هم أشد منهم بطشا فنقبوا في البلاد فنقبوا في البلاد هل من محيص إن في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد ولقد خلقنا السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام وما مسنا وما مسنا من لغوب فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل الغروب ومن الليل فسبح هو أدب السجود واستمع يوم ينادي المناد من مكان قريب يوم يسمعون الصيحة بالحق ذلك يوم الخروج إنا نحن نحيي ونميت وإلينا المصير نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما أنت عليهم بجبار يوم تشقق الأرض عنهم سراعا ذلك عشر علينا يسير نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما أنت عليهم بجبار فذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن المجرمين في ضلال وسعر يوم يسحبون في النار على وجوههم ذوقوا مس سقر إنا كل شيء خلقناه بقدر وما أمرنا إلا واحدة كلمح بالبصر ولقد أهلكنا ولقد أهلكنا أشياعكم فهل من مدكر وكل شيء فعلوه في الزبر وكل صغير وكبير مستطر إن المتقين في جنات ونهر في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Yeah, I don't know where it is. I think it's in my room. Yeah, yeah, sure. 